Welcome to the Game Academy. I'm Mark, and I'm going solo today as I go over Shinobi Clans. This is a game from Post Human Studios for three to five players by Jurgen Meyer, and it's a card game of Ninja Conflict. So right away, it's got bonus points going for it. So first of all, what do you get with the game? Well, let's zoom out and take a look. So you're going to see here, we've got a deck of cards. Uh, we've also got uh, another deck. And this deck here is the rewards that you'll receive. And this is really the, some of the points that you're going for. And then you also have the people that you're going after, your targets. So you may have a merchant, or you may have an old ninja master. Uh, different people that you're going after that you're targeting because you're a ninja you're going after these people and you basically want to kill them so what you're going to do is you're going to randomly have three of these guys come out and then you're going to have these rewards cards randomly assigned to each guy here and that is going to mean how much they're worth now guys are worth more points if you kill them, obviously. Killing people is much better for business, says Master Fuji. Alright, so as you can see here, on our merchant, he's worth two points naturally. If you assassinate him, he's also worth four additional points. This is the assassin side. And we've got the guardian side. So guys who are protecting these guys and guys who are trying to assassinate these guys. So over here, it's worth more to assassinate, so six altogether. On the other hand, it's going to it's four if you help defend this guy. So not as big of a payout, but you do have a little bit of a bonus right away. They come with some guards built in, you know, they don't just come without preparation. I mean, the old Ninja Master is very wise, so you can view it as they have guards or, or whatever you want. Or you could just view it as that old Ninja Master kicks some serious butt. Anyway, uh, so Ed, we're going to put these cards up, and then there's some different things that's going to happen. You have two different ways you can draft, really, in this game. And one is the Seven Wonders style draft, where you just pick a card uh, out of the in this one you'll get 10 cards and you'll pick one and pass them around the other way is you can actually put all the cards face up um, a few at a time and then everybody drafts out of that so you kind of have a different strategic outlook on how the game plays it's considered the more advanced version I don't know if I prefer it that way it really becomes thinky at that point and can bog it down a little is it necessary it depends on how much you like the game. I, I don't know if I would want to do it or not. However, um, there's another thing about the basic way of drafting. It recommends that in the first round you have four cards that are randomly dealt to you. And those are part of your starting ten cards. Then everybody drafts six more cards. I don't like that because you can get some... Uh, you could potentially get a really weak hand out of those starting cards. It's supposed to help you kind of develop what strategy you're going to have, but I'm not sure I like that idea either. So my recommendation is just go straight up. If you're going to do it, just go with 10 cards, pass them around, do the regular draft, and see if you like it that way. You can try it either way. I mean, obviously, it's up to you, but, you know, your mileage may vary. Okay, so everybody's going to draft their cards, and then what what we're going to do next is you have these tokens here and these tokens are for each of these uh, characters so as you can see I've got a merchant here I've got the old ninja master the daimyo but I'm going to show you I've got one red and one blue one red one blue so what I have to do I didn't grab all of them out of the box, but what I have to do is I have to determine, based on my hand, who I'm going to help and how I'm going to help them. I can only pick two of these. 
And obviously I can't pick a red and a blue for the same character. So I can't be trying to assassinate the Ninja Master and guard him. That would just be ridiculous. What I can do, however, is I could say I'm going to try and get this nine money out of this old Ninja Master and assassinate him. But I want to help protect this, the Daimyo, so I'm going to select that as the other one. And then the Merchant, he's just kind of that wild card guy. I could play some cards that could really mess things up for other people who are playing there. And then we're going to go into the ninja phase. And so everybody's got their two contracts selected. It's a secret. And we're not going to reveal them yet. But now, on your player's turn, you can play one battle card. So let's say you got your ten cards in your hand. Well, your basic battle cards are, you've got these blue ones, right? And it says Guardian. So they go on the Guardian battle slots, but not yet. What you're going to do is, you're, if you're going to play like a Guardian or an Assassin, you're going to play them face down on the battle stack. Now let's say, since I'm protecting the Daimyo, I probably want to put this Adept face down here. So I formed a battle stack. That battle has begun. Now we keep playing, so maybe I want to place an Assassin here. And you'll notice their strength based on how many uh, ninja stars they have, or these little helmets. Um, helmets are defense, uh, the shooting stars are for attack. And you keep doing that. And another thing you can do is there's weapons, and each thing beside here is considered a slot. And I'll explain that to you in a moment. But you can put a weapon in a slot face down. So this is slot one. If I put a card here, it'd be slot two, slot three and so on and so forth. You're probably not going to want to place one clear down here in slot 5 or whatever you want to call it you know, in Timbuktu. But if I put one here, when a ninja's revealed later on, he's going to gain this weapon. So, you know, that's a weapon. You can see it can be used for defense or offense. It's orange. You can also have some specialists. And you just basically read what says on them. Some of them you may have to play face up. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, but there there's some that are going to be useful, and some sometimes you're going to play them face up. There's also events. I don't have one out at the moment, but here we go. So draw a card at random from another player's hand and play it immediately. That's an event. I play that face up, where, just wherever. And then it's discarded, basically, once I play it. You've got meddlers. And usually what they have is a plus one or a plus two to the money that you're going to collect if you help defend or help kill them. You know, it just depends. So meddlers will go in those stacks, too. And when they reveal, they're going to help uh, either positively or negatively. But that just, once again, it... It increases those rewards. And that money, or whatever you want to say, it's what you're going for. The, the end result is you want to have the most money at the end of the game. And so keep that in mind. Now, one thing to kind of note, this, this old Ninja Master, a lot of people are probably going to want to assassinate him. So it, it could become where everybody's trying to assassinate him, and it's no contest. But you got to divide that money evenly at the end. So keep that in mind as well. Um, but meddlers, they're placed face down. Uh, then basically what you'll do is once everybody's played their cards to these stacks, you start revealing these cards. So once you start revealing a stack, you just kind of keep going. And then here's how that works. So... You reveal it. Okay, so we've got a uh, secret lover. So now this old ninja master, he's worth a little bit more if somebody helps defend him. Now I play the next card, and you play him from top down. So I've got an apprentice. All right, so he's helping defend him. Okay, so there he goes. I probably didn't do that right. Hold on just a second. I've got a, I wanted to add a weapon here too. So let's say there's a weapon over here. All right, so now my next card is Shinobi Master Spy. Play face up. Well, I should have. <laughs> this is one of the ones where you play face up. 
You draw a card, reveal up to two cards under Shinobi Master Spy, and then discard Shinobi Master Spy. That kind of helps you see who's playing what, and it might give you an idea of, you know, should I get real heavily involved in this battle? Is it worth my time? Or do I, can I really mess up somebody, what they're doing here? So it can be a really nice card to play to just kind of see what's going on. So I know that's in the stack, but I'm just kind of doing this at random. All right, so now we got an Adept. So he goes over there. Now we've got a rival. This rival is adding to the other side. Now we've got this Master Assassin. And we flip over the weapon, it's a shuriken. So now he's got a five attack. Now we add it all up, right? We've got four helmets. Five, six, seven. On the other side, we have five attack. So who wins? Win goes to the defense because, well, obviously, we have all those helmets. And that's pretty much how that's going to go. So we're going to go ahead and, you know, resolve each one of these battles separately. And then people are going to collect their money. It's also worth noting that the assassins have to exceed the defense. Otherwise, they just beat down the guards, but they, you know, that old ninja master barely makes it out with the skin of his teeth. You have to exceed if you're the assassin. So ties go the way of the defender. So that's how that's going to work. But let's back up just a moment because the battle phase is we choose the target to resolve, we reveal contracts, so we, anybody who's attacking him or defending him will reveal right now since we're resolving this. Now, basically, whoever's the start player or whatever, they, you know, have somebody decide, well, we'll resolve this one first. The battles won't affect each other, really. So just keep that in mind. They, they're they self-contained, so it doesn't really matter which one you start at. If you know that one's going to be full of drama and you want to do that one first, then by all means, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so the order really doesn't matter. It just has to be resolved completely before you move on to the next one. Otherwise, it'd be really confusing. But it's a very simple mechanic. You reveal from top down, and it's it just works really well for what it does. It's a little bit different than most other of the drafting games that you have out there. The artwork's really... Um, it's a different style of art, and I think some people will really appreciate it. Some might not like it as much. It's really got, uh, you know... A lot of vibrant watercolor type look to it and I really enjoy the vividness of this game. I like how up here in the corner they kind of give you that brief description. Guardian, it's got a couple dots to show you that it's two. It kind of gives you a quick overview. The game itself, pretty intuitive. There's not a lot of confusion on what you can do on your turn and how the game plays. I think it's a simple enough drafting game, and it's at a decent enough price point that I think a lot of people can get into it. The theme is great. Uh, you're either defending or you're attacking. It's different from a lot of the other games, like Seven Wonders. You're kind of just doing your own thing. Among the stars, for the most part, you're doing your own thing. Shinobi Clans, you're interacting. You're messing up other people's stuff. So if that's kind of something that you're looking for, a little more interaction in one of these drafting games, then this might be that game that you're looking for. Because it's different. It has a bright, vivid color. They don't waste space in this box. This box is packed with what it has, and it doesn't waste a, a footprint, I guess you could say, like some of the other games do, with a giant box or... It has to have so much space on their shelves to meet that certain price point. So I think you're going to get a lot of mileage out of this game. There's a lot of different cards that do a lot of different things. And some of them make it slightly more complicated, but really, if you just read the cards, it makes total sense. 
Very easy, simple drafting game. Easier to understand, I think, than Seven Wonders is. The subject matter may not be something that everybody likes, but it's something a lot of people will be into. And the interaction will be something that makes the game a lot more fun than maybe Seven Wonders might be with your group. I think it's something to think about. However, there are some quibbles that I would have with it as well. You're limited to those two contracts out of those three things. You have to divide the money up evenly. So sometimes you get into a situation where everybody might have gone for this one thing and now everybody's got to divide that money out evenly. So there's a little bit of a cat and mouse aspect going on. Sometimes that could drive you nuts too. Maybe it's, maybe it's just me sometimes, but you try and outthink yourself. And maybe you're like, well, I'm, I'm clearly not going to try and assassinate the old ninja master. Because everybody else does. You know, it's like the Princess Bride. Well, clearly, you know that I'm not smart, en that I'm smart enough that I will not attack the Ninja Master. Because clearly, you're going to attack the Ninja Master. And if we both attack the Ninja Master, then we're going to divide the winnings for it. And I don't want to divide the winnings with you. So, once again, three to five players, it doesn't overexpand its... Uh, how many people it has three to five it works well with pretty much any number so I'm gonna say Shinobi clans I recommend it I think it's the only game that I've really seen post human studios do it's a winner check it out Shinobi clans